Welcome to Art with McKinsey. I am your artist today, McKinsey. Be sure to check out my Etsy page to find all the cool stuff that you can buy for your home. Today we're going to be making a dinosaur claw for our T-Rex model. First we're going to clean up our viewport. We're going to get rid of the camera and the light because we don't need it for today. Up here I like to get rid of the 3D cursor and add the statistics because we will be subdividing a lot today and you need to know how to subdivide just to the right amount that you can work with for your computer setup. Down here we will expand the viewport and get rid of this bottom screen. So we'll hit Shift A and we'll add a reference image. I'll add my image, you can add yours. A quick Google and you can find plenty of references for dinosaur claws. This just happens to be the one that I chose. So I'll click on it, hit GX to move along the X axis, RX 90, and that'll rotate it 90 degrees. Uh, S to scale, get it nice and big for me. And now we will get rid of this cube. Instead, we will hit Shift A. We'll add a mesh to the cylinder. And down here on the bottom, you can add more vertices. I think 50 will be enough for what we're working with today. You don't want to go too high, but you also don't want to be too low. So we'll click on the object, hit R to rotate 90, to rotate on a 90. We'll rotate a little bit more and we're going to click on the object and hit SX so you can scale it on the x-axis because we don't need it perfectly round we want it in an oval shape just like the claw so we'll go into edit mode click this face extrude G to move E to extrude E to extrude a little bit more get it just at the tip and if you mess up hit control Z and then fix your work and get back to it. We'll take this face, we'll rotate it, extrude, extrude again, rotate to kind of match this back edge, S to scale, G to move, we'll get it kind of lined up for now. We'll go into the wireframe mode, grab this line, hit S to scale, R to rotate, we'll start getting it lined up with our reference photo do the same with this one, and this one, and this one. And we're just using the qu quick shortcuts of G, R, and S to get it lined up how we want it. And already we have a claw shape in just a matter of minutes. If you're happy with this, you can use this, but I want to add a lot more detail because I like a lot of detail. And we're going to start subdividing this on our own by adding edge loops by hitting Control R and we'll add edge loops all around here. And just like before, we will go through, we'll click Alt on the line to grab the whole edge loop and we will adjust it from here. S to scale, G to move, R to rotate, and just line it up with your reference image. The more you work it, the better your outcome will be. Let me get rid of my reference image for now so I can see it on its own. I'll try to get this curve a little bit nicer. We're going to be adding a lot more faces by subdividing later. 
we'll go to this vertices menu scroll down to smooth vertices and it should smooth out all of our vertices fairly well and it did has a nice natural looking curve to it we're going to subdivide go to the edge menu at the top here go down to subdivide click it and you'll see it subdivided our edges and you can also use a quick link to subdivide I'll do it a couple times and you can see in this upper left hand corner that our triangles are increasing you hit control Z to unsubdivide and bring it back down and subdivide it as much as you can uh, that, that suits your system best so we're at about a quarter million faces we're going to go into sculpt Go to the very top option, that's your draw option. Hold down shift to smooth. In the upper right hand corner there is a butterfly with an XYZ, shows you all your axes. Make sure the X is checked, that way you are smoothing or uh, sculpting on both sides. Good way to check if you're doing both sides, grab your grab tool see it'll affect both sides of the x-axis. This makes it work a little bit faster. So we'll go back to draw and we'll continue smoothing out our claw. Get rid of some of those hard edges for us. I use Blender to sculpt as though I'm sculpting actual clay so I don't like to use modifiers if I don't have to. gives my work a little bit more of a natural look and if you want your work to have a natural look you can do it too so we're going to open up this next window because I want to do some detail work on the inside of the claw but I want to be able to see what I'm doing so on the left side I'll have a, uh, an opaque view and on this right side I'll have a clear view that way I can sculpt while looking at my reference image and also see what I'm actually changing on my solid view on the left. So I'm just going to keep doing a sharp draw on this curve to get a nice deep groove. And I'm going to smooth out the bottom a little bit. Wherever you start smoothing is the surface it'll try to flatten out to. So keep that in mind, and now I'll just fiddle with this blood groove in the claw, as you see it does the same on both sides because we have that X checked, and now we go to edit mode, we're going to subdivide more. The more subdivisions you have, the more detail you can put into your sculpt because it gives you more vertices, edges, and faces to manipulate. We'll just smooth this out a little bit, add a little bit more of indentation. I want a nice, clean, smooth surface so I can see what I'm actually changing. go back to the big view and now we're going to roughen up the surface and as you can see there's plenty here if we subdivide again it will more than double our surface we have about five million and you want to make sure that the butterfly at the very top is unchecked so you don't want both sides having the same sculpt. You want this all to be uh, original on each side. 
If your system can't handle 5 million angles, then just get as high as you can uh, and go from there. And all I'm going to do now with the sharp draw tool is get it uh, really small. And I'm just going to scratch back and forth along the surface of the claw. And I'm going to go in the direction of the claw. We'll get rid of the reference image because we don't need that anymore. And just scrape back and forth. Don't worry about how deep you're getting it yet. We're going to be smoothing them out later. As you can see, my computer's having a bit of an issue rendering this. But we'll keep going as far as we can. Again, go lengthwise. Scrape, scrape, scrape. Or scratch, scratch, scratch. I'm not doing anything fancy here. I have a Waco tablet with a little pen that I'm using. And I highly suggest you have something like that if you're doing this with a mouse. Super props to you. But a pen is a way to go. And for some reason in this spot, my computer just doesn't like rendering this. So we're going to have to change it, I think. But we'll keep scraping, getting the surface nice and detailed. Scrape, scrape, scrape. The more you do it, the more you'll see it come together. Don't worry about errant or random lines going up or down because we're going to deal with that later too. This one spot just keeps giving me issues. So we'll go into object mode. We'll click the object. We will go to decimate. And I'm going to get rid of some of these. The ratio right now is 1. I'm going to put it to 0.5. And what that will do is have the number of triangles. So we had about 5 million, and now we're at around 2.5 million and you see it still looks good and we're gonna go back and we're gonna keep scratching and that's so much easier my computer can handle it very well now and it's still doing what I want so we'll keep going with it so put on some music some tunes and gets to sculpting up my radius a little bit get it nice and big and with my mouse I'll click and soften up the surface a little bit one click at a time until it looks right if you just smooth everything out then you're just gonna erase everything you did so get a slightly bigger radius on your draw tool and now you will go crosswise adding a little bit more detail to your claw and you want a lot of cross hatching at the tip because that's where the claw grabs the prey the most gets into bone so it's going to be all tore up and we'll just do this all along the bottom because that's where most of the damage goes we'll do a little bit on the sides and I'm not going off of a reference picture I'm just doing what feels natural you want again you want the radius to be a little bit bigger than your original scratches because this is what you'll see a little bit more of you can keep this at a two million poly count claw if you want to 3d print this as it is but what we are going to do is decimate it because we're going to add it to our t-rex 
model and we don't want to add 2 million triangles to something that's already going to have a high poly count. I'm going to drop this down to 0.25. We're going to do a quarter and see how that looks. It's going to take a second. We have under a million. We have around 600,000 polys. So we're going to apply it because it looks good. And that will also take just a second depending on your system. But 600,000 polys is still pretty high, so I'm going to decimate it again. I'm going to drop it down to 0.1, which should be about around 60,000 triangles. And there we go. And it did the best it could, getting all the faces and all the detail it can. As you can see, applied and unapplied, there's not too much of a difference. And because this is just a claw, and when we print it out, it won't be that big. Uh, this will work perfectly. And you can decimate it probably down to 20,000 if you want. Because again, it is just a claw. But it's going to be a claw with detail. And that's something, that's something everybody wants. The more detail you have, the better off your sculpt will be. Here, I'm just playing around with different decimate levels for you. I like the way that looks. So we'll apply it. Apply whatever decimate level you wanted. This is good enough for me. And we will be adding it to our T-Rex. Be sure to check that video out if you want to learn how to sculpt and model a T-Rex. And thank you for joining me on Art with McKenzie. It was fun doing art with you. And I'll see you on the next video.